Chapter 112 to 117. Did he start already? Kuroto muttered while looking at the ninjas rushing towards the Hokage office. If there really is some disturbance within the village at this time, then it proves that Kuroto's guess that Uchiha Shinichi who was a nobody in the original series might have awakened the Manjikyu in this time and space is indeed correct. Although the fact that Shinichi acted so quickly still surprised Kuroto. After all, whether getting used to the sudden increase in strength or to gather all sorts of intelligence and make other preparations, all requires quite some time, and Kuroto doesn't believe that Shinichi could have prepared everything in such a short period. But the fact that Shinichi still acted, must mean that either he is doing it all recklessly without complete preparation or he has Ibido's support behind him. While Kuroto was busy analyzing, Yui also noticed that something was wrong and walked to the terrace and asked Kuroto, Kuroto-kun, what happened? While lightly stroking Yui's hair, he spoke in a gentle tone to ease her nervousness, the village is heavily guarded and Hokage-sama is also present in the village, what can happen with him around? Don't worry about it. But what about them? Asked Yui in a worried tone. Looking in the direction of village, Yui also noticed that there were still some ninjas rushing towards the Hokage building, and she couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. For her who has experienced the Third Shinobi War and the follow-up Kyuubi's Rebellion, even a little bit of disturbance in the village would produce anxiety and instinctive fear, and the situation just now seems to be turning exactly what fears her. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen, perhaps Sandem sama ordered an urgent task. While casually joking around, he added, Now listen, you will go to your home and rest, with the presence of Patriarch and Hisashi-sama, the clan will be safe, and after checking around the situation I'll be joining you, understand? Seeing Kuroto's look, Yui suddenly held his sleeve and said quickly, Please, now let's go to the clan together, kuroto Kuen, please. Kuroto noticed that Yui was being quite emotional and feeling a little uneasy, so bringing her into a gentle hug, Kuroto patted her back to ease her nervousness and said softly, It's alright Yui, haven't I already promised that I would always come back to you? No matter how far I go, I will always come back to you, so rest assured. Kuroto's promise did ease her a little and she finally nodded. Seeing that Yui agreed, Kuroto explained, although the squad I am part of is under a temporary suspension, as an umbu direct under Hokage-sama, I should remain on standby for any notice. Yui also knew of kuroto Kuen's identity as an umbu shinobi so she nodded in understanding. Shadow Clone Technique Kuroto created two clones and sent one clone to escort Yui to her home, while he left his other clone at his home and he disguised himself in a black cloak coupled with a black mask, to cover his entire face. With his cover set, Kuroto immediately swallowed the fruit of the snake grass. This fruit is nothing too powerful, but it can effectively change the smell of a person and therefore make any method of tracking using odor useless. Kuroto was once ambushed by the rock beheading unit because of his smell and the other time found by the cloud shinobi in the land of hot water because of being tracked due to the odor, so to not repeat that mistake again, he searched for a method to hide his odor. And now he makes sure to have this fruit every time he moves to hide his tracks. After everything was ready, Kuroto's figure disappeared with a flicker in the night. First goal is Hokage building, only after confirming what actually happened can he proceed to take personal actions. After easily sneaking into a house with a vintage view of the movements occurring around the Hokage building, Kuroto observed the entire situation with his Byakugan all while the owner of the house has fainted peacefully on his bed. The lights in the Hokage building were brightly lit, with dozens of ninjas already gathered at the square, with more coming from time to time, indicating that the situation was really serious. Moving his gaze from the square outside to the Hokage building, Kuroto was able to discern that at least 10 Umbu squads have already been assembled and waiting for the order. Tapping his chin while analyzing every detail, Kuroto thought to himself, there was no attack at the Hokage building must mean that Uchiha Shinichi's target for revenge should be the base of the route. Sandem sama has already assembled so many elite ninjas, but he still did not order for civilians to take refuge. From this alone, it can be judged that Shinichi's actions are independent with no involvement of the Uchiha clan in the rebellion, therefore these ninjas assembled by Hokage-sama should be called for monitoring and guarding against any possible attacks from the Uchiha clan. Otherwise, a single Uchiha's rebellion wouldn't make sandem sama call for so much combat force, unless Sandem knows of Shinichi's great secret. After understanding this, Kuroto again disappeared with a flicker and arrived at the base of the root unit. Upon arriving at the root base, Kuroto found that the guards at the entrance were already fallen in the pool of blood. His goal really is root. Muttered Kuroto silently as this confirmed Kuroto's guess. After nodding to himself, Kuroto also entered the root base without any delay. The silence at the root base was deafening, with the smell of fresh blood permeating the air. 
The situation clearly narrates a very tragic tale of several battles that must have occurred here not very long ago. Following the underground passage, Kuroto stepped into the deepest part of the root base. On the way here, he didn't find even a single root shinobi alive, each and every single one of them was dead by a sword cut, even when he removed their masks to check the situation, Kuroto discovered that there was no extra expression on their faces. This implied that either they all died under the effect of Genjutsu or that they couldn't even respond to Uchiha Shinichi's attack speed, that is to say, Shinichi was too fast for them to even notice. That guy's strength has improved to such a degree. Muttered Kuroto as he raised his guard, the degree of Shinichi's improvement in strength actually seems beyond Kuroto's expectations. After turning a few corners, Kuroto finally saw signs of alive people. Seeing the four root ninjas stood on guard in an alert state, Kuroto immediately retreated backward to not let them discover his presence. If there is still a team here guarding something with such alertness, so in all likelihood, it has to be the storehouse of the root base. Nodding himself that he finally found the right location, Kuroto put his hand in the ninja bag and readied his kunai. Kuroto's entire purpose of sneaking into the root base at this time was to use the golden opportunity that Shinichi presented him with to rob Danzo. After all, whether they are the scrolls of forbidden techniques from Danzo's collections or the test results of human experimentation carried out under Danzo's orders, all are of an urgent need for Kuroto. So, having made up his mind, Kuroto immediately rushed out, his current strength has long surpassed the level of Akage, so even if he doesn't enter into the Tensigen Chakra mode, there wouldn't be any problem fighting just four root ninjas. Who? Be careful it's an enemy attack. As soon as Kuroto's figure appeared before them, the root ninja exclaimed immediately, strangely enough, the reason for their exclamation wasn't Kuroto, but another man wearing a swirl mask, who suddenly appeared out of thin air from some sort of spiraling whirlpool. Two died under Kuroto's kunai while the other two were thrown into the spiral whirlpool by the orange masked man. With the continuous appearance of two strangers, four root ninjas inexplicable died even before they could initiate an attack. After solving the four mobs, the two guys, each wearing a black cloak and a mask over their faces stood opposite each other. With the two of them facing each other, the atmosphere turned a little embarrassing. Even Kuroto wearing a black mask couldn't help but curse in annoyance. Undoubtedly encountering a Beto here really frustrated him. And same was the case for the orange masked man. He obviously didn't expect someone to suddenly jump into the game, not to mention it was also a guy wearing a black cloak and a mask just like himself. This is a surprise. Neither of the two sides back off and stood opposite to each other at the suspected door on the root base's storehouse. Walking through the road in the Uchiha clan while carrying his younger brother on his back, Itachi looked a little dazed. The Uchiha clan was very noisy at the moment, with the crying and screaming of children, arguing of adults, and all kinds of rushing around. Everything seems to indicate that something bad was about to happen. Even before he reached his house, Itachi could already see the silhouettes of several Uchiha shinobi in a combat-ready state waiting excitedly at the door of his house. From a single glance, they all look excited and happy about something. Looking at these people, Itachi silently walked through the door to not attract their attention upon himself or Sasuke. After entering the house, he was again surprised to find that the yard of his house was also full of Uchiha clansmen. The only difference was that all the clansmen gathered here were either shinobi of special jonin rank or jonin rank, there was no sign of even a single chunin or genin present here. How come so many elites gathered here at this time? Muttered Itachi as even he was a little worried seeing all these people gathered here. His guess was only confirmed when he heard the vague sounds of an ongoing argument, down the lobby. Noticing the familiar voice, Itachi stopped and listened attentively. In the lobby. Shusui who was in the presence of several elite Uchiha Jonin said decisively, You are all crazy. I will never allow this to happen. One of the Uchiha's elite was furious at Shusui's words and shouted angrily, Shusui, are you going to betray the clan? Do not forget that you too are an Uchiha. It is because I am Uchiha that I would not allow you all to trample our pride only to bring ruin to the Uchiha clan. After a short pause, Shusui turned towards the Patriarch Fugaku who was sitting silently and said with the sincerest expression, Patriarch, you must have considered the consequences of the coup. Once the village falls into a civil war, Cloud and Rock wouldn't hesitate to intervene to attain benefits, by then even if the position of the Hokage is in the hands of the Uchiha clan, how will we resist the entire shinobi army of four great villages? Even before Fugaku could speak a word, another Uchiha elite Jonin said with an arrogant snort, as long as the Uchiha are here, Kanoha doesn't need to fear either of the rock or cloud. Immediately the group of Jonin present here nodded in agreement, yes, with Uchiha clan in Kanoha, there isn't any threat that we can't deal with. 
Seeing that the situation was being escalated beyond control, Uchiha Fugaku raised his hands and calmed down everyone, then said to Shir Sui, Shinichi has already rebelled, we don't have any other choice Shir Sui. Shir Sui shook his head and silenced everyone with his voice, no. We do have a choice. Seeing that everyone was silent, Fugaku stared at Shir Sui, waiting for him to explain whatever he wanted to say. After taking a deep breath, Shir Sui stated, Shinichi's behavior is his personal choice to pursue revenge for Kurumi's death, and his actions don't have anything to do with the Uchiha clan. Don't you all see, he didn't notify any of the shinobi in the clan before carrying out the rebellion, it just shows that neither does he has any intention of relying on the clan nor does he want us to get involved in his personal matter. One of the jonin who has been quiet throughout the discussion finally asked Shir Sui, but Shinichi has awakened the legendary Manjikyu Sharingan. Are we just going to let him die in the hands of the village like this? Before Shinichi started acting, he knocked down this jonin who was in charge of monitoring Shinichi, because of what Shinichi did to the two Uchihanin at the Naka Shrine. And this Uchiha jonin was able to notice Shinichi's Manjikyu very clearly, therefore all the elites of the Uchiha clan have learned that Uchiha Shinichi has awakened Uchiha's legendary eyes. This is also the main reason why they are all clamoring here to launch a coup, the people of the Uchiha clan are convinced that the legendary Manjikyu Sharingan is unmatched in the shinobi world. Shir Sui begged by bowing before everyone present, please just trust me, I will definitely bring back Shinichi with my own hands and then I will persuade Hokage-sama to spare his life for the actions he took. Please just have faith in me. The current Kanoha severely lacks Kage-class combat personnel, therefore Shir Sui believes that as long as he successfully brings back Shinichi, it is very likely that Sandame will forgive him, in order to preserve important combat personnel for the village. After all, the threat from the Cloud Village hasn't been lifted and until the peace agreement is signed by both parties, a war may break out at any instant. Glancing at Shir Sui who was too eager Fugaku indifferently stated, I am sorry to disappoint you Shir Sui, but with Shinichi's current strength you stand no chance against him. Fugaku knows full well just how powerful Manjikyu can be, after all, he also has those cursed eyes, so in his opinion, even if Shir Sui is the most genius shinobi of the Uchiha clan, he still wouldn't stand a chance against Shinichi who has awakened the Manjikyu Sharingan. Patriarch's cold words made him understand that he can no longer hide his Manjikyu, so after taking a deep breath, he immediately opened his Manjikyu and again said with a bow, Now, I believe that you can trust my words Fugaku-sama, please give me a chance, I will definitely bring Shinichi back safely. At this moment Shir Sui has made up his mind to bring Shinichi back to the village even if he had to use Kotoemitsukami to do it. Shir Sui, when did you? Everyone looked at the four-pointed pinwheel with shock, amazement, or awe in their eyes. Even Fugaku was a little dazed for a second. Looking at Shir Sui's Manjikyu, at this moment a sudden thought sparked in Fugaku's mind, with the presence of three Manjikyu Sharingan, it may not be impossible for the Uchiha clan to take the position of Kanoha's Hokage. At the root base. Staring at Ibido standing opposite to him, Kuroto started thinking of all the countermeasures he can use. The strength of Ibito was fully revealed on the night of Kyuubi's rebellion. Not only was he able to control Kyuubi with a single Manjikyu but also get past all the Umbu squads of the Sandim-sama, even when fighting against Minato-sama, he was sturdy enough to stand the blow of several Raisengan attacks and still not suffer any serious damage. It would be too difficult to kill him without Kakashi's Manjikyu. Kuroto reached this conclusion without any complicated analysis. Although it is easy for Kuroto to repel Ibito with his strength, Killing is another matter altogether and Kuroto knows that even if not impossible, it is still very difficult. After all, Kuroto doesn't have any method to stop Abito if he tries to escape. Kuroto has no means to interfere in the Kamui space, this is also the reason why Kuroto wasn't able to feel Abito's presence even a moment ago when he just came out of that space. This is because Kamui space is a space parallel to the shinobi world. And neither his Byakugan nor the Tensigen allows him to interfere or see through the parallel space, at least, Yet, it doesn't. And in this case, even Minato-sama, who is extremely proficient in space-time jutsu, fuenjutsu, and other kinjutsu, could only watch Ibito leave helplessly without any means to stop him. Chain clanging noise. Bored of the staring contest that's been going on between the two for a while now, Ibito took out a chain and leisurely fixed its two ends on his wrists, his behavior was all too calm and clearly indicated that he didn't care about the other party's presence. Perhaps in his eyes, no one in the Kanoha village is competent enough for him to get serious. Noticing that Ibito was already ready, Kuroto also turned serious. In fact, he was a little emotional when facing Ibito, Kuroto still can't understand just what kind of mentality Ibito had when he was facing Yandim-sama, but it didn't matter anymore, 
Here and now, a beetle was an enemy, no matter how pitiful, an enemy is an enemy. Whoosh. The two of them disappeared at the same time turning into after images and pounced against each other at a sound breaking speed. The flying iron chain that didn't leave any trace of sound and the kunai that reflected the light of a candle, lit in the gloomy underground passage, collided. Neither of them uttered even a single word from beginning to end. Neither of them wanted to say anything, nor was there any need to. The two shinobi who both stood at the last of their class in the ninja academy were now engaged in a silent confrontation. As soon as the two sides were about to collide, Kuroto's figure directly phased through Obito's body, but as he expected the follow-up iron chain that came had to be avoided by crouching down. In this short bout, the position of the two was exchanged. Flashback. Hey, the guy with the Byakugan, I am Uchiha Obito, what is your name? Hyuga Kuroto. Ha. Hyuga Kuroto, remember this, I am the one who is going to become the Hokage in the future, tell you what, how about I let you become my guard at that time? how about it? Oh, I don't know about the future, but I guess I should be grateful to you for now. Huh, grateful for what? I am grateful to you for being the last rank in the exam, because of you I am not the dead last. PFT. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, the sound of laughter of the whole class echoed as soon as Kuroto finished this sentence. You, 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 arg, damn it, when I awaken the Sharingan, I'll let you all know that Uchiha clan is the greatest, and I'll be the first Hokage from the Uchiha clan, Hokage Uchiha Abito-sama. Yeah, sure whatever, but for that, you'll have to pass the graduation exams and become a shinobi first, which you clearly suck at. Said one of the academy students in their class. Ha ha ha. Flashback end. Looking at the opposite figure of Abito rushing towards him, the first memory of the interaction between the two flashed in Kuroto's mind. Back when they were both in the ninja academy, Kuroto and Abito were always hovering at the last of class in all of the practical tests, Kuroto was naturally very good at theoretical tests because of his good understanding of theoretical concepts, but when it came to practical application, whether it was shurikenjutsu, taijutsu or ninjutsu, Kuroto was only slightly better than Abito, and that too because of his cunningness. But now everything's changed, both of them have grown into powerful shinobi who can control the chain of the events happening in the villages. The changes that take place in the world are also marvelous. Two dead last kids are now some of the strongest ninjas one could find. Unable to succeed in the first attack left Abito a little dejected, so after taking a look at his hands, he shook the chain and prepared to launch another strike. Kuroto also got ready for another clash, throwing away the kunai in his hands, he put his hand inside the ninja bag at his waist. The silence between the two continued. Whoosh. With just a wave of his hand, Abito rushed towards Kuroto, and following behind him was the chain. Kuroto didn't rush up this time but leaped backward quickly to dodge the attack, however just as soon as he avoided the incoming chain, he was grabbed on the shoulder by Abito. With just a single touch the spiraling whirlpool started appearing on Kuroto's shoulder but without any worry of it, Kuroto pressed his hands against Abito's chest. Noticing that the opposite party attached a detonation charm on his chest, Abito thought with disdain, it's my win. In Abito's opinion, as long as he touches the other party, the guy is bound to die, as for the matter of the detonation charm on his chest? Abito has no worry about it. The spiraling vortex kept growing in size, and soon Kuroto's figure started to get a little blurry. Except for the dead yellow flash, no one can avoid my Kamui. Thought Abito with a slight smirk. However, suddenly something sent him flying afar along with the iron chain, and since this happened too suddenly Abito didn't have time to avoid it by transferring himself into Kamui's space at the moment of flying out. And in the process of being repelled, the detonation charm on his chest also exploded. Boom, boom. A series of explosions resounded, but it didn't make Kuroto any happier. Too bad I guess. Muttered Kuroto in disappointment. Although the smoke of the explosion hasn't dissipated, Kuroto already knew that just before the explosion, Abito transferred into Kamui's space, so he wasn't injured in the slightest. After the smoke cleared, Abito's figure appeared out of the spiraling void, but this time, he didn't have his previous indifferent calmness. Looking at the person standing opposite to him with a black cloak and mask, Abito finally decided to break the silence, well, that surprised me, so, who are you? Or rather, why are you here anyway? Abito who knows of the existence of the Rinnegan understood that the previous technique used by the opposite party was very similar to that of Pain's Shinra Tensei. In the current shinobi world, as far as Abito knew, only Pain could use such a technique, therefore he was quite interested in the identity of the other party. The guy was dressed in a black cloak and wears a mask too just like himself, 
but Ibito also knew that he wasn't Pain. This made him interested in the other party's identity. Listening to Ibito's gloomy voice, Kuroto smirked playfully and decided to speak in a hoarse and heavy accent, I could ask the same question, who are you and why are you here? Although Ibito with Kamui is indeed really difficult to deal with, that's only for ordinary shinobi, Kuroto could easily repel him using the rain interaction. So, even if he was about to be pulled into Kamui space, as long as Kuroto is conscious, he can instantly avoid being targeted by Kamui. There was an awkward silence between the two following Kuroto's question, and after a little bit of consideration, Abito finally spoke while pointing towards the gate of the storeroom on the side, forget about it, if your goal is that place, we don't need to have any conflict. Kuroto also glanced towards the gate of the storeroom and nodded after a little bit of pondering. In the short bout the two had, Kuroto was able to notice the embedded simple Sharingan in Abito's left eye socket, this means that even if Kuroto uses a surprise attack by entering the Tensegan Chakra mode, and luckily succeeds to kill Abito using the Golden Will Reincarnation Explosion, Abito would still change the reality of his death and come back to life at the cost of that Sharingan by casting the Uchiha's Forbidden Jutsu, Izanagi, and then quickly escape into the Kamui space. So, this again clarified that this battle would have no result without Kakashi's assistance. Since Kuroto understands this full well, so he will naturally not give out too much information about his abilities to the other party by engaging in a pointless battle, if Abito becomes interested in him more than he already is, it would make Kuroto a bit uncomfortable, as he didn't want to end up like Yandim sama Therefore, he decided to play along. So, the two sides looked at each other and nodded in agreement for a temporary truce. Both of them are aware that instead of dragging down each other and attract the village's attention here, it is better to take the advantage of the chaos that Uchiha Shinichi has caused and rob Danzo's base. Since the of them reached an agreement, although still alert against each other, the weapons were put away nonetheless. Casually walking towards the gate of the secret library, Abito once looked at the ceiling technique engraved on the door and after a little once over, he glanced in the direction of Kuroto. See you on the other side, leaving this sentence, he phased through the gate and entered the storeroom. Undoubtedly, the real reason why Abito didn't directly enter the storeroom previously was that he wanted to confirm the ceiling technique engraved at the door, and now that he confirmed that it wouldn't threaten him in the slightest, he directly phased through the gate after a little bit of teasing Kuroto. Shaking his head helplessly at Abito's playful actions, Kuroto lightly walked towards the gate and murmured, Kai, while putting his hand at the gate. Cluck. With a soft sound, the door opened. The seal engraved at the gate was derived from the Uzumaki Four Symbols seal that Kuroto has mastered by heart, so releasing it was no problem for him. As soon as Abito saw the other person lifting the seal instantly and followed in without any trouble, he became a little annoyed. Ignoring Abito's disappointment, Kuroto looked around the room. In the warehouse size room, rows and rows of glass refrigerators containing a variety of materials, many types of chemical reagents, petri dishes containing tissue samples, and various other experimental equipment were clearly visible to him. Kuroto could even see a big jar containing several Sharingan dispersed in a preservation solution, and just by a rough count, there were nine of them present. Seeing so many Sharingan lying there, Kuroto secretly murmured, Shimura Danzo actually has so many Sharingan already? Were some of them left by Naiden Sama? Or is it that he has been secretly collecting them through the previous three great shinobi wars? A large number of Sharingan were found in the storeroom, at first, it might be shocking but after a little consideration, it didn't seem that surprising. The research on Sharingan must have been started by Naiden Sama, which was later carried out by Danzo in cooperation with Orochimaru. In this regard, Naiden Sama can actually be regarded as the founder of this all. And since Danzo supported many of Orochimaru's experiments so he naturally enjoyed the results of his research. Perhaps it was during this process, Danzo discovered the true power of the Sharingan, or maybe it could be from Uchiha Kagami, a teammate, and therefore he was determined to eradicate the entire Uchiha clan to have a greater number of Sharingan at his disposal. Abito noticed the other party's gaze at the vessel containing the Sharingan and spoke in a voice that wouldn't accept any argument, I'll take all the Sharingan, you can choose whatever you want, I won't interfere in that. Kuroto pondered a little hearing Abito's words. If it was Manjikyu Sharingan, he would definitely not let Abito take it, this is because each Manjikyu has a cheat ability so letting a future enemy have it would be really troublesome, but since they are simple 3 Tomo Sharingan, then they aren't very useful for Kuroto for now. After all, Kuroto isn't an Uchiha, is he? So, at least for now, he doesn't need them, and even if he does, there is a whole clan in the village. Besides, with Abito's ability, it isn't very difficult for him to take away Sharingan from the people of the Uchiha clan, so it's better to let him have the Sharingan of the already dead ones, rather than making him go after the other Uchiha. 
Moreover, in terms of value, the cell culture dishes are more precious for Kuroto. So, after a moment of analyzing, Kuroto nodded and said, all right. The two who reached a consensus immediately became busy. Kuroto quickly walked through the shelves containing the cell culture dishes and after looking through them attentively, he took out the storage scrolls in his ninja bag. Obviously, Kuroto still can't judge whose cells are present in the culture dishes, so he decided to take them all, and find the right pieces of equipment to later distinguish them one by one. But considering that Danzo never stopped researching Hashirama cells, Kuroto can at least make a guess, that these culture dishes must contain Hashirama cells. After removing, the culture dishes from the cooling shelves, Kuroto carefully placed them on the storage scroll and muttered softly, seal. Puff. With a puff of smoke, all the cell culture dishes placed on the scroll were sealed in it one by one. On the other side, Abito was also doing the same thing. The two of them worked in a tacit understanding, neither interfering with the other nor helping each other, just simply and straightforwardly robbing Shimura Danzo. Uchiha clan, Patriarch's house. At the moment Shirsue revealed his Manjikyu in front of all the Uchiha clan's men present in the meeting, the ambitions were suddenly lit in the heart of Uchiha Fugaku. However, Fugaku also understood that Shirsue wouldn't support their idea of coup, and may even side with the village which would be disadvantageous, and since the whereabouts of Shinichi are already unknown, so he has to be patient and look for the right opportunity, by setting up the pieces in the right direction. For a bloodless coup, Fugaku would have to at least persuade Shirsue to take Uchiha's side and find and bring back Shinichi. Only when the power of all three Manjikyu users is concentrated within the clan, will they be able to eliminate the elders of the Kanoha council instantly, and seize the position of the Hokage while the other clans in the village haven't reacted. With that in mind, Fugaku straightforwardly rejected all the opinions and arguments and ordered Shirsue, go and bring Shinichi back safely. Yes. Shirsue repeatedly nodded. The fact that Patriarch opted to trust him with the task of bringing Shinichi back safely really made him happy and he breathed in relief. Please rest assured everyone, I will definitely bring Shinichi back safe and sound. Said Shirsue with a bow. And just as soon as he was about to leave, one of the Uchiha Chunin suddenly came inside running in a panic and shouted, Please forgive me for the discourtesy of intrusion, but the situation is not good Captain, Sandame and his umbu have surrounded us. What? Everyone was taken aback by the sudden news. Shirsue immediately knocked the Uchiha Chunin who brought this news on the wall by the collar and shouted furiously, what nonsense are you talking about? How can Hokage-sama lead the Umbu to surround the Uchiha clan? The Uchiha Chunin who was suddenly knocked on the wall struggled to get rid of Shirsue's grip and roared, go and see for yourself, outside the clan land, there are so many of the ninjas surrounding the entire territory of the clan. How can that be? Is the village going to deal with us? If that's the case then what are we waiting for? Patriarch, please give the order. Yes, Patriarch, please give the order to fight, it's better to die while fighting rather than silently. Yes, with you, Shinichi, and Sure Sui, we can definitely win, Sandame is getting old, he wouldn't be able to stop the Uchiha, we definitely have a chance. The meeting room that was quiet for some time was again filled with chaotic noise, the fire of rebellion was burning in the eyes of all the Uchiha present, and Sure Sui's expression was really horrified. What do I do? I need to stop them, if this goes on, then the entire village will be destroyed. Looking at the faces of people that were clamoring sure Sui couldn't think of anything at the moment. What would you do in this situation Kurodo-san? This was sure Sui's thought. While sure Sui was searching for some hope, Fugaku who sat at his seat also had a gloomy face as he was brainstorming. Perhaps it's because he has awakened the Manjikyu, Fugaku was still calm and analyzing the situation. And precisely because of his calmness, he quickly figured out Sandame's intentions behind this move. If the village leaders really decided to exterminate the Uchiha clan, then the battle would have already broken right now, their attack would have been silent and decisive, and they would definitely not allow all the Uchiha elites to gather in one spot and excitedly discuss the idea of rebellion, as well as letting a Chunin discover their move, therefore losing the element of surprise. With that understood, Fugaku muttered silently, seems like Sandame just wants to deter us and stabilize the situation to the best of his ability. This was Fugaku's conclusion. After thinking this, Fugaku slowly got up from his seat. Seeing the patriarch stand up, the eyes of everyone fell upon him, waiting for the order. Shirsue who was in a panicked state also cast his eyes at him, at this moment his palms were sweating in nervousness and his heart was beating so fast that it would literally explode. If you have never thought of using the Kotoemitsukami then what's the point of having it in the first place? These words that Kuroto-san spoke kept resounded in his mind. 
And at that moment Shi Sui finally understood that he has only one method to solve the situation from escalating. He has made up his mind, if Uchiha Fugaku gave the order of a coup d'etat, Shi Sui will immediately use Koto Amatsukami and control him with the ultimate Jinjutsu. Controlling Fugaku would be the best option. But thinking this is one thing, being able to actually do is another. Therefore, every second felt like an eternity as Shi Sui waited to listen to Fugaku's response. Facing everyone's gaze Fugaku said solemnly, Calm down everyone, you three will stay here, and the rest will follow me while I talk with Sandame to understand the situation. Patriarch's words relieved Shi Sui a little, at least, he didn't directly give the order for rebellion. Leading a group of Uchihanin, Fugaku soon went outside. Outside Uchiha clan. At this time hundreds of Kanoha ninjas gathered around and surrounded the Uchiha clan territory from all sides. There were also about two dozen Umbu squads who stood on guard at various points. All these ninjas were in a battle-ready state and as long as Sandame gave the order, they will immediately rush into the Uchiha clan to apprehend Uchiha Shinichi. Of course, aside from the Umbu and some of the elites, most of these shinobi were not completely aware that their purpose here was not to hunt down Uchiha Shinichi but to suppress the Uchiha clan if necessary. Fugaku Uchiha who led a group of Uchihanin had a gloomier mood when he looked at the Kanohanin surrounding Uchiha clan. Taking a deep breath to calm down his anger he said to his people, you all stay here, only Shi Sui will follow me. After giving this order to the Uchihanin behind him, Fugaku led Shi Sui towards the point where Sandame stood under the protection of an Umbu squad. Fugaku and Shi Sui's arrival also alerted the Umbunin, all the Kanoha may not know but this very squad was aware of Uchiha Shi Sui's Manjikyu Sharingan, therefore they were prepared for any attack. After approaching Sandame, Fugaku asked coldly but courteously, Hokage-sama, what are your intentions by surrounding my clan? Hiruzen Sarutobi's hawk-like eyes swept past Fugaku and Shi Sui, and said calmly, by now you must have received the news that Uchiha Shinichi has betrayed the village. Fugaku nodded coldly, there was no need to deny this. Shi Sui hurriedly stepped forward and said, Hokage-sama, please rest assured, I will go and bring back Shinichi now. Shaking his head, Hiruzen denied Shi Sui's request, now is a special time, none of the Uchihanin are allowed to leave the territory of the clan, until the matter of Uchiha Shinichi is resolved. Fugaku who heard Sandame's words thought secretly, it seems that Sandame also knows that Shinichi has awakened the Manjikyu. Sandame brought so many Kanohanin just to deter the Uchiha clan to give up the idea of Ku, and not get influenced by Shinichi's Manjikyu, if the Elder Council wasn't aware of this, they wouldn't have mobilized so many ninjas to deal with an ordinary Uchiha. Listening to Sandame's words, Shi Sui tried explaining, Hokage-sama, please trust me, I'll bring back Shinichi. Taking a puff from his tobacco pipe, Sandame shook his head and said in a calm and unquestionable voice, I have already sent Umbu to hunt him down, he will be brought back soon whether dead or alive. Crush. Uchiha Shinichi who crushed the neck of the last Umbu ninja with one hand looked in the direction of the village indifferently. His actions this time weren't assisted by anyone. For this reason, even when he sneaked into the root base, he couldn't find Shimura Danzo, and that root shinobi, being disappointed, had to make do with killing all the other ninjas at the root base, and then fled out of the village under the chase of several umbu. Releasing his grip from the neck of the now dead umbu, he observed the four umbu ninjas that fell around him. For Shinichi, defeating these four umbu wasn't a big deal, and if anyone noticed the situation of the surrounding, then they can easily conclude that it was a one-sided defeat of the four umbu, with no exaggerated signs of battle. Other than the umbu whose neck was crushed by Shinichi, the other three died with clean and simple sword strikes. Noticing something, Shinichi suddenly turned his attention towards the direction of the village with a noticeable frown on his face. Ever since awakening Manjikyu Sharingan, his perception and insight have increased drastically, so he was able to notice another umbu team rushing towards him. And among the umbu in the squad, one particular chakra caught his interest. Initially, he thought of leaving, but now that he noticed that particular chakra signature, he stopped again and drew out the short sword on his waist and patiently waited for them to arrive. Whoosh! 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 With the sound of breaking wind, one after another Umbu ninja flickered around Shinichi and surrounded him from all sides. Not minding their actions, Shinichi calmly observed all the Umbu with squinty eyes. Noticing Uchiha Shinichi's calmness, one of the Umbu with a dog mask said seriously, Uchiha Shinichi, surrender and come back to the village with us, you will receive a fair trial for your actions. While tapping his sword on his shoulder, Shinichi only muttered coldly, so, it really is you, Hataki Kakashi? 
Being the only non-Uchiha to use the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, Hitaki Kakashi is no stranger to the members of the Uchiha clan, so most of the Uchiha knows about him and some even believe that the reason for his strength is the Sharingan. Taking off his mask dog mask, the Umbun ninja revealed himself before Shinichi, and as per expectations it really was none other than the captain of the Umbu team, 11, Hitaki Kakashi. Putting away his mask, Kakashi said seriously, Uchiha Shinichi, things haven't yet turned irreversible, you still have the chance to turn back on your actions and come back with us. Yeah, I am not interested. Muttered Shinichi with a yawn in boredom while waving his hands indifferently and asked indifferently as he cleaned off some dirt in his ear, by the way, why are you the only one that came here, where are Hyuga Kuroto and Shirsue? The identities of the Umbu members of the team, 11 are not a secret to the members of the Uchiha clan because of the information given by Shirsue, and generally, therefore, all the Uchihanin above Chunin rank are informed of such details. And in Shinichi's eyes, Kakashi alone is nothing, the one he wanted to defeat was the pride of the Uchiha clan, Shirsue, and Hyuga Kuroto, to whom he lost previously. As for the last member of their class, it's just some monkey with the green tights whose name Shinichi can't bother to remember, and he doesn't care about that freak. Kakashi said while shaking his head, they are on other tasks. This was obviously a lie, it's because Hokage-sama didn't call either of the other three of Team 11 and only sent him alone, so Kakashi knew very well that both Shirsue and Kuroto would be at their homes respectively. Hearing Kakashi's reply Shinichi shook his head in disappointment, a pity, thought that I might be able to have a good battle, but looks like I'll have to be disappointed, man, nothing's going as planned. But I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Understanding that Uchiha Shinichi didn't have any intention of surrendering, Kakashi's frowned. He knew just what it means to have the power of the Manjikyu Sharingan, therefore Kakashi still tried to persuade him, Uchiha Shinichi, you'll have to understand that your actions will not only harm you but will also affect the entire Uchiha clan, so think clearly wh. Whoosh. Even before Kakashi could finish his sentence, the two umbu standing at the side launched a surprise attack at Shinichi from the two sides and penetrated through Shinichi's body. Drip. The red blood flowed along the body of the two swords and dripped on the ground. Successfully piercing Shinichi from both sides, one of the Umbu ninjas turned towards Kakashi and said coldly, what are you wasting so much time with talking nonsense? He is a traitor, just kill him and be done with it. Not paying attention to the Umbu's words, Kakashi observed Shinichi with a frown. It's not a genjutsu, neither is that any type of shadow clone, does that mean he is really dead? Kakashi was extremely shocked, he obviously didn't expect the Umbu on the side to make the sudden move much less succeeding in the surprise attack. No. This can't be right. Dealing with a Manjikyu Awakener would definitely be difficult than this. Was Kakashi's thought. Noticing Kakashi's shock, another Umbu said with an arrogant smirk, Heh. I don't think the legendary Manjikyu Sharingan is that big of a deal, in fact, there wasn't even any need for Hokage-sama to send so many Umbu to hunt him down. Really? Came the chuckling voice of Uchiha Shinichi who still had two swords passing through his ribs. Even before the two umbu could turn or retreat, and before Kakashi or the other umbu could warn them, the heads of those two were cleaved off their body with a single swipe. No one expected this. Uchiha Shinichi who should have already been dead because of being pierced by the two swords was not only not dead, but his movements too fast and rhythmic to not even be considered injured. With a solemn expression, Kakashi again wore his umbu mask and was alert more than ever. Observing, Shinichi's condition with the Sharingan he was a little confused. Kakashi can be sure that the wounds Uchiha Shinichi received were indeed real, as there is still blood on the ground, and it's definitely not some kind of genjutsu, so he couldn't understand how Shinichi was acting as if he didn't suffer from any injury. Clang. Clang. Shinichi calmly drew out the two swords penetrating his chest and threw them on the ground casually. And immediately following that the sword wound disappeared instantly, the speed was so fast that it far surpassed the limit of regeneration. Looking at this Kakashi muttered to himself, is regeneration his Manjikyu ability? Not paying any mind to the alert Umbu still surrounding him, Shinichi smirked arrogantly as he declared with a slight chuckle, Today, I will let you all understand the true power of the Sharingan. Understanding that negotiation was no longer an option, Kakashi ordered the surrounding Umbu without any more hesitation, Everyone be ready for one of the most difficult of your life, and make sure to not directly look into his eyes. Yes. The surrounding Umbu responded and immediately launched their coordinated attacks on Shinichi. Whyish? 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 Clang! 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 Boom! Boom! 
Instantly, the sound of shuriken, kanai, and sword metal collision sound and the explosions of detonation charm resounded in the forest. The howling ninjutsu and a rapid clash of swords and fists caused mayhem in the gloomy night. All the while the battle kept on going, Kakashi who was hidden in the environment, carefully observed Shinichi's movements throughout the clash while waiting for a perfect opportunity for the insta-kill and to better understand Shinichi's Manjiku ability. As far as Kakashi understands, only by understanding and countering Uchiha Shinichi's Manjiku Sharingan ability, will they be able to subdue, defeat, or kill Shinichi, otherwise, all their attacks would be wasted just like it happened previously. That time was definitely not a genjutsu, he was indeed pierced through the chest by the two swords, but why did he heal instantly? If regeneration is really his Manjiku ability, then how am I supposed to counter it? Although Kakashi is not an Uchiha, he still believes that only a Sharingan can deal with another Sharingan, therefore, currently only he with a Sharingan can deal with Uchiha Shinichi. Root Base After robbing the secret storeroom, Kuroto and Abito both again faced each other. Their previous fight was although short, still made both of them understand that neither of them could kill the other party in a short amount of time. Now that they don't have much time in their hands, as the Umbu ninjas may arrive here at any time, then it would be troublesome, and once such a golden opportunity is missed then it wouldn't be easy for the next one to arrive. With that understood, Abito asked in a deep voice, you should know that there is more than just one storeroom here, so how about we continue our truce and continue the work we were doing? Kuroto nodded in agreement, as long as you don't interfere with me, we can continue. Both of them are cunning since they understand that fighting each other will be fruitless, so it is better to work in a truce and act separately to continue robbing the old coot Danzo rather than hindering each other and go back empty-handed. After reaching a consensus, Abito nodded and distorted into the spiraling whirl. Observing the entire process with his Tensigen Kuroto couldn't help but mutter in wonder, Kamui is indeed both convenient and weird. And it's truly amazing to even be able to break through truth-seeking balls. From this alone, the true power of the Kamui can be determined, and it's perfectly unreasonable. At the same time, it also shows that truth-seeking balls cannot defend against spatial shredding. Thinking upon just how much of a cheat various abilities of the Sharingan can be, Kuroto couldn't help but sigh. Putting away his thoughts, Kuroto also disappeared with a flicker and rushed towards the other secret storeroom to continue robbing Danzo. Obviously, it's not the right time to care about the true power of Kamui, if he doesn't take advantage of the opportunity that Uchiha Shinichi presented him with, then his plan to build a new laboratory would take a lot of time, and Kuroto can't have that. Quickly traveling through various underground passages, Kuroto stopped at a corner. Using the X-ray vision of the Byakugan, he observed through the wall only to find a large laboratory past the wall. And from the looks of it, the laboratory specializes in live, in vivo, and in vitro experimentation. And strangely enough, neither was there any test subjects in any of the incubators, nor any researcher or other staff, and from the condition of all the equipment, either the laboratory was newly designed or that there was a temporary pause in its operating. Kuroto sneaked into this lab past the seal at the gate after repeatedly confirming that there was no presence of any enemy in the surroundings. As soon as he arrived inside the lab, there was a visible sparkle in his eyes while greedily looking at all the things with literal saliva dripping from his mouth. This is a large cell incubator. Moving past that, he came to a row of microarray. I have never seen this type of nutrient shells, is it newly developed? Stroking the glass cover of nutrient shells, Kuroto walked towards the test bench and his eyes fell upon a microscope. Holy shit! Orochimaru only had one of such a high-power microscope. With just a short walk around, Kuroto roughly understood the level of this laboratory. If by standards, the laboratory left to him by Orochimaru was level, 1, then this lab can easily be graded as level, 5. Kuroto isn't even sure what many of the devices here are used for. This shows just how high-end and advanced this laboratory is. If I can have such a lab. Suddenly such a thought ignited, but suddenly Kuroto realized that he doesn't have enough storage scrolls with him. The amount of space in each storage scroll is limited, and especially when you are sealing delicate equipment space has to be reserved accordingly to avoid any damage. Therefore, Kuroto wouldn't be able to store and carry away much of the equipment. If only I had Abito's Manjiku Sharingan. But unfortunately, that's not possible for now, so Kuroto was now fishing in troubled waters, initially, he thought that the storage scrolls he brought with him should be enough, but now he clearly can't do that. At this moment Kuroto was a little jealous of Abito, who could just transfer these all inside the Kamui space. Damn, I underestimated Danzo's background. While slandering the old coot in his heart, Kuroto started to choose the equipment. Since he can't steal everything, 
then it's better to choose the most advanced and valuable ones. In a dense forest outside Kanoha. Boom. 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 The wind waves generated by the explosions sent everything flying around. Kakashi flickered backward and paid close attention to Uchiha Shinichi's movements with his Sharingan. Through this period of observation, Kakashi found that Uchiha Shinichi is not only very strong in Genjutsu but also a master of Taijutsu, Shurikenjutsu, Kenjutsu, as well as Ninjutsu, his Kenjutsu is especially profound. Ding! 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 While deflecting some of the shurikens that were shot at him easily, Shinichi sneered coldly, Your shuriken and kunai feel like a child's throw to me, are you guys even serious? The five umbu ninja ignored Shinichi's ridicule while panting in silence. This series of fierce attacks consumed most of their chakra and seeing that it didn't bring any result made all of them feel frustrated. There was not even a scratch on Uchiha Shinichi's body. An umbu noticed that the morale of the team was dropping so he shouted in encouragement, don't worry, as long as we hold him back, more reinforcements will soon be coming from the village. Ha ha ha. Hold me. That's a nice one, I didn't know that umbu ninjas are taught to be a comedian, but still, I gotta say you really are funny. Do they teach you to kill the enemy by making them die of laughter? Mocked Shinichi as if he heard the funniest joke. After a light chuckle, he continued with a cold tone, you all think you can decide that? Followed by his voice, a dark green chakra phantom started taking form around Shinichi and slowly it turned into a half-skeletal figure. No doubt, it's the first stage Susano. You people don't understand just how scary can the Manjikyu Sharingan be. But you all don't have to worry, why? Because I'll teach you all before sending you all to meet these two. As Shinichi's voice fell, the roar of the Susanoo resounded in the forest. With just a wave of his Susanoo's single all five of the Umbu ninjas were swept away. W what is that? Kakashi who was silently observing Shinichi was shocked. After knocking away the five Umbu ninjas, Shinichi didn't go after them but simply glanced towards Kakashi. Facing the gaze of the demonic figure, even Kakashi can't help but feel the cold sweat simply because of the heavy and cold chakra pressure. Smirking towards Kakashi who couldn't even move due to shock, Shinichi roared, Hitaki Kakashi, die you bastard. This kind of power is not something that ordinary ninjas can resist, if all the members of Team 11 are here, then there might even be a chance of a victory, but with me alone, it's completely impossible to defeat him. The panic of being in the presence of a monster was building up within Kakashi. Initially, Kakashi thought that with the Manjikyu Sharingan in his left eye, he would somehow be able to resist and subdue Uchiha Shinichi but now he understands that he was thinking too much. At this moment, Uchiha Shinichi who roared towards Kakashi frowned suddenly. Then without waiting for Kakashi to react, he releases the Susanoo, and without saying anything, just turned and left in quite a hurry all while completely ignoring Kakashi's presence. His actions seemed like he had more important things to do than just killing Kakashi. Kakashi who was preparing himself to fight to the death was stunned on the spot and could only flap his lips like a fish in awkwardness. What happened? He clearly had the upper hand and could have easily killed me, so why go away? Is it that I am unworthy for him to even bother about killing me? If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.